It's the top horn bands in rock in the 1970s. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Book. Before we get going, remember, if you enjoy our videos, like them and subscribe to our channel. This is a fairly new channel. We need your help. Blood, Sweat and Tears. Formed in New York City in 1967, the Canadian-American jazz rock combo, Blood, Sweat and Tears, are known for their fusion of rock, blues, pop music, horn arrangements and jazz improvisations into a hybrid that came to be known as jazz rock. The creation of the group was inspired by the brass rock ideas of the Buckinghams and its producer, James William Gersio. With lead vocalist David Clayton Thomas, the band first hit it big with their second album in 1969. The number one quadruple platinum self-titled album was their best-selling and yielded three number two hits, You've Made Me So Very Happy, and When I Die, and Spinning Wheel. The album rose to the top of the U.S. charts for a collective seven weeks and received a Grammy Award for Album of the Year in 1970. From 70 to 72, the group placed more than five hit singles in the U.S. Top 100. Heidi Ho, Lucretia McEvil, Go Down Gamblin', Lisa Listen to Me, and So Long Dixie. Chicago. Named for the Windy City, the band formed in 1967, first calling themselves the Chicago Transit Authority in 1968, before shortening the name the year after. Produced by James William Gursio, the self-described rock and roll band with horns blended elements of classical jazz, R&B, pop music, and a steady stream of hits throughout the 1970s and 80s. With the horn section of James Panko on trombone, Lee Lofnam on trumpet, and Walter Perizader on woodwinds. The seven-piece band created memorable songs and numerous hits throughout the decade, including Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is, Beginnings, Make Me Smile, 25 or 624, Saturday in the Park, Just You and Me, Feeling Stronger Every Day, I've Been Searching So Long, Call On Me, Old Days and If You Leave Me Now, Earth, Wind and Fire, one of the most innovative and commercially successful acts of all time. Earth, Wind & Fire span numerous musical genres, including R&B, soul, funk, jazz, disco, pop, rock, dance, and Latin. Formed in 1969 with Maurice White, the band is known for its kalimba sound, dynamic horn section, energetic and elaborate stage shows, and the contrast between White's baritone and Philip Bailey's falsetto vocals. The group had their first hit in 1975 with Shining Star. It was number one on the U.S. Billboard pop charts and R&B charts, for their first of eight R&B number one singles. The band continued to put out several top 10 singles throughout the 70s and early 80s with Sing a Song, The Beatles Got to Get You Into My Life, September Boogie Wonderland, After the Love is Gone, and Let's Groove. Ides of March. Originating from the suburbs of Chicago in 1964, the Ides of March began as a four-piece band called The Shondells. In 1966, after changing their name to the Ides of March, the band released their first single. But it wasn't until 1970 that the group would hit it big, with their only U.S. Top 40 single, Vehicle, a song that just missed the top spot, peaking at number two in the spring of that year. It was the fastest-selling single in the history of Warner Brothers Records at that time. The song was written by vocalist and frontman Jim Pederick, who would go on to form the rock band Survivor and co-write all of their hits in the 80s. Vehicle included that distinctive horn section riff, which caused some listeners to mistake the band for blood, sweat and tears. The Average White Band Formed in London in early 1972, the Scottish act are known for their funk and R&B style and a series of soul and disco hits between 74 and 1980. They're best known for their million-selling instrumental track, Pick Up the Pieces, and their albums AWB and Cut the Cake. In 1975, the single Pick Up the Pieces, taken from that number one album AWB, reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100. Written by founding member and saxophonist Roger Ball, guitarist Hamish Stewart, and the entire band collectively, the song is essentially an instrumental, apart from the song title being shouted at several points in the tune. AWB followed that up with their 75 album, Cut the Cake, which yielded the hit title track, reaching number 10 on the U.S. pop charts. 